I'm Lisa de Nicolitz, and I'd like to read to you from my novel, A Glittering Chaos. Viewer discretion advised. You look very happy, Hans says. You had a good day? Very good, she replies, startled to see him, her laughter extinguished. I thought you'd still be at the conference. Nope, wrap things up for the night. I said I'd take you out for dinner, and here I am. The last thing in the world she wants is to be with Hans. I'd love that, she says, her eyes turned slightly away from his. I'll go and take a shower and get ready. Take your time, no rush. She stands motionless under the shower, trying to adjust her mindset in order to have a wifely dinner with her husband. She dries herself and finds a clean dress. And despite all her ablution, she can still smell Gunther, his cigarettes, his sweat, and his cologne. She can see his casual grin and the way his eyes crinkled when he smiled and how he cocked a single eyebrow when he was thinking. And how strong and warm and beautifully solid he felt as she held him while he cried. I'm thinking we go to Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville, Hans says when Melusine sits down next to him and she's astonished. Of all the places, I never thought you'd choose that one. But she's smiling and her tone is affectionate. I'll get us a pitcher of margaritas, Hans is expansive. And we'll misbehave so much that not even Jonas would recognize us in a lineup. Sounds good to me, Melusine agrees. But she wishes that Hans wasn't so pale and anemic compared to Gunther. She decides to tell Hans about her planned trip to the Valley of Fire and get it off her chest. I booked a tour to see the Valley of Fire tomorrow. Can I still go or do you need me? You booked it? How? There's a man in our hotel who speaks English and German. She's amazed at the smoothness of her lies. He booked it for me. But do you need me for anything? The only thing I want or need is for you to go and have a great time, Hans tells her. And she breathes a sigh of relief. She grabs her purse. I'm ready. They leave and Melusine is worried that Gunther will see her with Hans. But then she remembers that she told him she was dining with her husband. So it isn't anything he doesn't already know. She glances up at the second floor, but it's deserted. She and Hans walk down the strip to the restaurant. They disgust me, Hans growls, with the card snapping men and women. And women, too, selling other women. They should all be ashamed. It would not do to tell Hans that she finds the pictures erotic and arousing. Then Melusine stops suddenly, recalling with shame and horror why he feels the way he does. Oh, Hans. She says, taking him by the arm. It's because of Cattery, isn't it? No, he says shortly. Okay, well, yes, I suppose so. It's still so hard not knowing where she is, even after all these years. Hans's younger sister, Cattery, disappeared inexplicably one day when she was 14 and Hans was 17 at the time. And despite exhaustive investigations, no trace of Cattery had ever been found. And even some 28 years later, the loss of his sister is no easier for Hans to bear. When Melazine met Hans at university, Kateri had been missing for three years, and he still held a small vigil for her every Tuesday, the day of her disappearance. And Melazine knows that he's never stopped learning to hoping to learn the truth about what happened. And she looks at him now as he discards the cards in anger. And she has no idea the degree to which Kateri has always been a part of their life, a third wheel on the bicycle of their marriage. And she also has no idea what Hans is really doing in Las Vegas. So that's from A Glittering Chaos, which you can order off Amazon.ca, or if you're in Canada, you can pop into a bookstore. And I hope you enjoyed the reading. Thank you.